Hi, my name is Elle Lashko and I work for Energy on the ACON project as a geologist, which is someone who looks at rocks. Now my specialist subject is in carbon capture and storage, but really more the storage section, as the capture is more down to chemical engineers. Now today I'd like to speak to you about how it's possible to store carbon dioxide, or CO2, within rocks. Now it can be a bit difficult to get your head around at first, so bear with me and I'll walk you through it. Well, to understand this, there's a couple of things that you need to know first. So there's many different types of rocks and they all have different properties, but the two that you need to know about are porosity and permeability. Now I've got two lumps of rock here to help me demonstrate this. So the first of these is a sandstone, and it doesn't take a geologist to know that sandstone is made out of sand, just the same kind that you find on the beach. Now between all these grains of sand are tiny little gaps or pores. Because there are many of these pores within the rock, we can call this porous. Now as these pores are connected and allow fluid to flow through it, we can also describe it as permeable. So this is our porous and permeable sandstone. Next, we've got a mudstone, and again, rather creatively, it's made out of mud. Now to get from a mud to this mudstone, this has to be buried under several layers of rock, and the water within it will slowly get squeezed out and the tiny particles of mud will get squished together. And because of this, the mudstone doesn't have a lot of pore space within it, so it's known as not porous. And as these pores are not connected, it's also not permeable and fluids won't be able to pass through it. Now, to successfully store CO2, we need both these kind of rocks, the sandstone and the mudstone. And normally, under the ground, you'll find that the sandstone is filled with a, a slightly salty water that's not drinkable, known as a brine. And as CO2 is lighter than this brine, when we inject it into the sandstone, it will rise above and want to sit on top of the water. Now, you may have spotted an issue here. What's to stop the CO2 just rising to the surface? Well, that's where our mudstone comes in. And as this is impermeable, when we inject the CO2 and it rises to the top, it will stop where it sees the mudstone as it cannot pass through it. So this mudstone acts like a cap rock or a seal, which will stop the CO2 from ever reaching the surface. Now this process is not new. In fact, there's over 30 places around the world that are currently storing CO2 in the ground. And in fact, the Norwegians have been doing this for over 20 years within their section of the North Sea. So first of all, we capture the CO2 onshore at our site in St Fergus, where there are pipelines that lead directly out to the Acon CO2 storage site. Now the kind of cool thing is that these pipelines were once used to transport natural gas from deep underground in the North Sea to the St Fergus gas terminal. And now we're going to be converting these pipelines so that we can transport CO2 from the gas terminal deep underground within the North Sea. So the Acon CO2 storage site is located about 100 kilometers offshore and two and a half kilometers deep underground. Now not to get too techy, but when we inject the CO2, it will be under a lot of pressure, so it becomes this kind of liquid. We'll pump this liquid from the onshore along the pipeline and inject it deep into the underground rock. We know the rocks that we're using are very secure. For one thing, for millions of years they've been holding natural gas that we've been using to heat our homes and schools for decades. This gives us confidence that it's a really good site to be storing CO2. We also know a lot about the rock formations from its active oil and gas history, and the site has been independently verified as a really great place to store CO2. For another thing, once the CO2 has been injected into the sandstone and is trapped beneath the mudstone cap rock, it will start to mix with the minerals that are within the sandstone and form carbonate minerals, which will permanently lock the CO2 out of the atmosphere. Okay, so the first thing to explain is that these storage sites are not just made up of one layer of sandstone and one layer of mudstone to keep everything contained. In fact, the Acorn CO2 storage site is 2.5 kilometers underneath the ground and there are multiple layers of sandstone and mudstone that would stop any CO2 leakage from reaching the surface. When we do the project, we'll be using lots of equipment to monitor where the CO2 is and make sure that it is stored permanently and safely underground. But in the extremely unlikely event of a small CO2 leak to the surface, the impact on marine life would be minimal 
and nothing in comparison to the consequences of taking no action. We sure do, we have loads of these rocks here in the North Sea and they're the very same rocks that we've been producing oil and gas for for the past 50 years. Now these are the exact same kind of rocks that we'll need to store CO2. In fact about 30% of the UK's potential CO2 storage which is a massive 23.8 gigatons, which is a billion tonnes, all lies within 50 kilometres of the pipelines that we're planning on using for the ACON project. So this 23.8 gigatons of potential CO2 storage is equivalent to 65 years of the UK's 2018 emissions, which is more than enough to help the UK along its just and safe transition to a net zero future alongside renewables and energy efficiency. Because of the really great combination of rocks deep underneath the North Sea, the Acorn Carbon Capture and Storage Project is an excellent option when it comes to the UK playing its part in tackling climate change.